Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So, like I said last video, we're gonna get on making some handlebars. Square tube bars are way easier to do than round tube because they can only go in so many directions. Round tube, trying to get two sides to be the same can get a little difficult unless you're good at that kind of stuff. I'm not, so I'm not gonna act like I am. But what you're gonna need to probably make some bars I like to use two pieces, um, unless you've got one really big long four or eight foot section of square tube, I like to use, I'll grab two four footers, no big deal. Um, I'll go ahead and give me a, a little bit of a bend in those, and then what that'll allow me to do, and I'll show you, is it'll allow me to get a little bit of a curvage in the front of the bar. Um, you'll want to grab some one inch, point, uh, one inch 16 gauge, don't forget, 16 gauge tubing, and you're going to want to get some 7 8 also because the 7 8 is going to not only go inside of the bars for your grips, but I also use them for the steering neck, which again, I'll show you. Um, I still need to clean up the 1 inch that I do have, so I'm going to do that really, really quick. Come right back here, and then I'll show you how to get started. All right, here's what we got on the table. I went ahead and I did this off camera just because I can give you guys the measurements. Write them down. First thing, grips are roughly about five inches long usually most bicycle grips even motorcycle grips are going to run you around five inches long so that leaves you about an inch to put inside the tubing okay so cut your tubing your handle at let's say six inches all right six inches on the handles your steering neck tube we're going to go at five and a half okay so five and a half this is where the steering neck connects to and one thing about having my tubing notcher is that when I make my pieces that come up on the side, I'm going to cut some 7 8 holes, 7 8 holes out of them so that this will actually slide inside of the, uh, of the top, or I, I don't know what they're actually called. But anyway, the bars will kind of go something, so they'll kind of go like this here and like this here, and we'll... The, the tube that runs across here, I'm going to have it go inside so that they can come down and come down. Okay? Isn't that cool? That's like, that's just what they're going to look like. Uh, anyway, so what I went ahead and did is I had this little bit left over. Um, so I didn't need to use an entire piece. So that's cool with me. I went ahead and I found center of that bar. Uh, here's where it starts to dimple. So it does, it's going to do it on both sides. So they're equal opportunity here. So we're going to lose those eight inches, lose those eight inches, and this is where my uprises are going to be. Yeah, that's what they're called. Uh, uprises. Huh. Anyway, we'll take these. Once I cut them to where I want them, I'll show you how you're going to get your angles. Now, of course, the longer this part here is, once I show you, the taller your bars are going to be also depending on what angle you cut them at so let's say let's say you do a you know a 45 degree angle i'll show you super bad lighting but this is my wife's bike here okay so these are bars that i did and you can see what i'm talking about so here's your up riser these are cut at a 45 and then i actually bent these tubes so i didn't bend these so these are just and you don't have to bend your tubes you can go straight up and down if that's what you're if that's what you're feeling you know, if you're feeling jiggy and that's what you want to do, just run these two straight up, okay? You're going to take your center post right here. They're going to go, and I put these inside here. These run back, and then here's your grips. So your grips are inside of that. So you weld those, and they're inside of here, so you got a little bit of extra, but you get the kind of the gist with these bars here. And I'm going to do a little different. My Mine are going to come up here. Can I have a little bit of a swoop? And then either a kickback towards me this way that way I don't know yet I kind of I like my bars to lean into the frame you can see hers are kind of straight up and down but I like mine to lean so um, these are longer too than normal I did that because she's little she's short so we did bars a little bit longer to reach her little t-rex arms <laughs> she's gonna love that luckily she doesn't watch this um, but that gives you an idea what I'm talking about. So let's get back over there and go cut some tubes. All 
All right, so I got my two tubes. They have a slight angle in them. So what I'm gonna want from them is to turn in this way, so I'm gonna lay them down. I'll lay them down like this. Also, make sure make sure your bends are going in the right way. Or you'll find out the wrong way. Anyway, they're gonna go like this, so I want them inward. So I want my, my center coming in down here. There to there. And then you just wanna measure from the bottom to where you wanna do your hole. And then that'll let you know, like I said, for me, what I'm gonna do, since I'm drilling my holes, that's gonna let you know that I'm drilling them. I'll measure all this beforehand, but anyway, the bars are coming off of this way. So this is what I was talking about, which is pretty neat about square tube, is it only has one axis that you can go on. So you wanna cut it at an angle, and depending on how much angle you give here, is how much that bar is gonna to need to lean forward. So the less angle you give it, the less you have to lean it. On these, you can use a chop saw um, or you can just use a measuring tape. How far down do you wanna come? So I'm gonna say I want mine down, I'm gonna go an inch and a half off the top of each one. So we're gonna do a line on this one and then I'll come over here off of the back because I know, and go ahead and label these. So I'm gonna put face. So now you're gonna take that tube, start in your corner. This is not an exact science. Um, if you need to, you can be a little bit more methodical about it and go ahead and measure from here to here and find your center. I'm just eyeballing it because once I have both of them cut, I'll lay them next to each other and grind them together. But I'll go across there and that's my cut. Same with this one. Okay, and you also know if it's off because when you cut square at an angle, one side will be higher than the other if, if that's not correct. So I'm gonna cut these real quick and then we'll start lining these up and then working on our back pieces. All right guys, so that you can see what I'm kind of talking about. So you see your square tube, can you? <laughs> Sorry, there you go. So you can see your square tube. On this one here, the cut is slightly off. So I don't know if you can tell in the video, but this point is lower than that point, which means this needs to be ground down some. This one here needs to be ground down just a little bit on there. And that's what you get from doing it by hand. But you can see right now, I'm at almost a 90 degree uh, turn. And that's not what I wanna do. So I'll probably come down more just so I can have the bars come, give me a little more kickback. Cause I might take the bars and run them, run them at a, at a slope like that. So I'm gonna put these together just like this on a table and then grind away so that they're both the same. It's not gonna be 100% perfect, but you can adjust it later when you're getting ready to weld it and I'll show you that. All right, here's the uprisers. Got them all ground down. Now here's what I was talking about. If you lay them together, make sure they're the same on the bottom. Hold them like this while you grind them. You can make sure that all your points Everywhere you put them end up being exactly the same, okay? So every time, I still gotta do some more, but every time you stick them completely together, you grind here, flip them, grind them, flip them, grind them. That way you know both sides are the same. Also, you can measure from here to here and from here to here. That might not always be exactly the same, but you get the idea. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, mark where I wanna drill my holes, so that this 7 eighths can go in there. Once this is in there and locked in, it'll allow me to lay these down flat with this inside of them. I can weld these together so that I know that this is perfect. And then we can start working on the arms and that is the more difficult part. I'm not gonna show you again how I drill, drill holes in metal because I do it all the time. So do that really quick and then I'll be right back. All right guys, so there you go. Got the holes drilled in. You can see through the bottom that these are inside of there now. I'm probably gonna do something kind of cool with them. Instead of having them go straight up and down, I kind of want them to do a little bit of a outward tilt, maybe something like that. The way to check it is put it at the end of a flat area, measure from here to here, here to here, to see if that works. So if I'm coming from here to the bottom, five and a half, five and a half. I'm gonna let that be just like that. Looks pretty good to me. 
Now what you want to do also is go ahead, before you do any welding, is go ahead and cap these off. Because once it's going to be hard to grind the welds off of the cap once they're on. So go ahead and I'm going to put them where I want them. I'll re-measure, but I'm going to take them out, cap these off first, weld that, clean that up. Then I'll stick everything together. Should be good to go. All right, guys, so I do got this laid out. I went ahead and threw just a small little tack in there, in there. I will go ahead and burn this around, but first we're gonna work on the pullback bar. That's what I'm gonna call it, because I don't really know what you call those, but we're gonna work on how do I want this to sit. So assuming, assuming that the bar is straight up and down, if I run this here, if I ran a straight bar, the bar would actually run down into you, so you'd have to tilt this back, which is cool, it's what I want. So what I probably am going to do though is I want the bar to swoop up. So that way you can tilt it a little bit forward, but still have that, um, have it to where it's coming back to you, but you're not leaning it all the way forward. So uh, I'll do the same exact cut after I bend up some more one inch. I'll bend up some more one inch over there and I'll do the exact same cut at the one and a half that I did here. Um, I can even measure this to here to here if I want to, to get a true exact amount. So this is probably the least fun part about making the bars, is trying to get both sides the same. Yeah, I know, it's all about math. But I'm gonna lay mine here, magnet them down with some dirty magnets. Make sure your magnets are super dirty, because that'll help. What I like to do, so I'll lay this one here. So I did it way opposite of what I was gonna do. <laughs> it's gonna have to swoop up, but oh well, not anymore. Anyway, if you did your cutting correctly, everything should line up pretty well as far as how they go here. And normally what I will do to cheat it a little bit is I'll tack weld the tips so that I have, con so I have some movement to figure out where I need to be. That tends to help a little bit with us uh, not so good at math folk and not the best measure. I'm not measure her, her, her. So yeah, so I'll do that real quick. We'll just give this a little tack on each end before we go burning it in. Now you get your measurements. So go ahead and measure from here to here to here to the table. So there we are, 10 and a quarter. Here we are, almost 10 and a quarter. You can also feel it out. I mean, hold the bars like this and feel them. All right, so those are correct. So now what I'll do is I'll tack the bottoms here and then I'll burn it all the way around. Perfect. Right where I want them to be. Right and flat. And this way. So now I've got to burn around. Get my helmet on actually weld this thing and then you can do the grips so that is finished Ooh, yeah stick mine right on the hot spot all right so that's done so now it's really going to be do where do you want your grips the issue here now is that i don't know because i'm not sitting on the frame to know how far back i want them but real simple you're going to stick your seven eighths in here Stick it in about a half an inch because you want to make sure you have enough room for grip and you can always cut back, but you can't add more. So that they're sticking out about five and a half to five and maybe five and a quarter, be okay. But this is, gives you an idea. We're gonna go clean these up. Um, we'll probably get back on this tomorrow though, just because it's been late, late night. I wanna go hang out with the kid for a little bit. Um, but we'll finish these up tomorrow so that we can spend more time cleaning them and really dialing them in, especially since they're gonna be going with that frame. So I can probably put my seat on there, sit down and really kind of figure out where it's gonna go. All right, so it's another day. I'm gonna get back on these bars now. Um, really don't have much to do, so it only should take a few minutes. Luckily, since I still have my frame here, I'm going to use it for mock-up on these bars so that I can see exactly where I want them to be and where I want to cut them down because we don't need them to be that long, but maybe we do. 
So let me go grab the bars. We'll sit down on this and kind of see what it does. I don't have the seat bolted in, but this is gonna give me an idea. So the bars would come out here. So I'm actually okay. I'm good with that. I'm okay with them being there because they'll be there. And this will put here. So you're not leaning way over, hunched over. You don't want that. It's not super comfortable. So I can actually go ahead, put the seven eighths in there and uh, get this buttoned up. And right, we're gonna slide the seven eighths into the bars. I need to figure out my markings first because I know that they are, I went ahead and I made these six inches. I know that I need to be, drop it on the floor. I know that I need to be in at least a half an inch. I can cut off what I do not want. All right, sorry guys, you wanna make sure your battery goes dead also while you're recording. All right, these will go in here, but they're not gonna just slide right in. Um, you're gonna need to give them a little bit of persuasion. Um, just because there's that little weld lip inside, so even though, yeah, it should go right in, it won't. One. Two. Now we'll go ahead and run some welds around this here and around this here. We are done really really helps if you turn the gas on so do that so all i'm going to do now is just some quick cleanup on the uh, ends there where the grips go so make sure they slide on nice and easy and then we'll wrap it up and there they are guys so that's it like i said not a super complicated bar to do when you're talking about doing everything out of square. Uh, be careful, super sharp there, but kind of see it's got a really good flow to it. Even kind of has a little bit of an arch in there. It'll actually lean forward this way. So, yep, I like them. I think they're gonna do just fine. Everything's even, super cool looking bar. Yeah, very happy with it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it gives you a little confidence in doing some bars like this because these are not a big deal, promise. When you get into doing round tube, it's cheaper just to buy them, honestly. Um, between buying seven eighths metal or even buying one inch and putting seven eighths inside of it, um, you're gonna be in it way more. Plus the hour plus it's gonna take you to do it. Don't bother. If you wanna buy some there, are a plethora of bar makers out there, the metal 7.8s. You're looking for 7.8s. Uh, smoothie, those are eBay motorcycle bars. 7.8s bars. You can, if I had to make those bars, it would have cost at my own personal time, it could have been three, four hundred dollar bars. So think about your time. Don't forget about that. Charge for your time. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. I'm going to be doing a lot more square tube frames. So if you guys have any questions, comment below. Let me know um, if there's anything else you want to see. I am for sure going to be producing this frame multiple times. Uh, so what I'll probably end up doing is making a center section and then making a bunch of the center sections and then worrying about the chain stays later. Uh, bars as well. Take the bars, start mass producing, just keep them, cutting them. Good thing about these here is those are usually what you have left over anyway. So again, guys. I, I do want to say uh, from the bottom of my heart, I do appreciate everybody that's subscribing and watching and liking and uh, you never grow as fast as you want to, but I am growing pretty quick and I'm super happy for it. There's not a whole lot of channels like this out there. So super cool. All right, guys, I'll see you next weekend. I'll be in Georgia. So whatever you guys will be watching. Yeah, I won't be here. Later.